Dr. Tanzi did some research and you brought it up before about infections being a cause of yep. Alzheimer's disease. How do you reconcile that with the herpes viruses and uh, the different types of viruses now that we're in the middle of COVID? How is that affecting our cognitive function? Yeah, so good point. So Rudy Tanzi and Robert Moyer published a number of years ago um, that in fact, if you look at this amyloid that we've vilified and people have the drug companies have tried to get, let's get rid of the amyloid. Well, actually, it is an antimicrobial peptide. You are fighting these various microbes. And so, again, there are people that say, oh, all herpes is, herpes is just, uh, that's what Alzheimer's is. No, it, again, it's a contributor. And so you're changing this network, and you can change it by introducing an infection. And as you indicated, herpes simplex 1, a good example. HHV6A, another example, it's a different herpes virus that can get into your brain and it does increase your risk. It is associated with cognitive decline. Then you can look at things like P. gingivalis, so things that are coming from your dentition. So poor dentition allows specific bacteria to grow. And interestingly, these can gain access to your brain. So you're talking about lip, talking about your oral, you know, your dentition, P. gingivalis, T. denticola, F. nucleatum, all of these things are bacteria that can gain entry to the brain. Then you're talking about things in your sinus, these various molds. When, and when you look at the brain, you can find things, fungi like candida, for example. You can find molds, things like that as well. It's amazing. If you look in the Alzheimer's brain, you do see infections frequently, but not always. Again, toxins and, and metabolic changes can, again, be part of this network downsizing that we call Alzheimer's disease. So absolutely, infections play an important role. And so when someone comes in with cognitive decline, you want to know, you want to know, do they have specific herpes viruses? Do they have specific uh, uh, oral pathology that is increasing their risk? Do they have chronic sinusitis? Are they growing specific molds from their sinuses that are putting them at increased risk? Do they have systemic infections, things like Borrelia, Babesia, Bartonella, that all are tick-borne illnesses. So you're right there in the Northeast, which is where you know the tick-borne illnesses are a real concern. We have them out here in California as well, but it's a big problem, of course, in the Northeast. So many people get Lyme disease and tick-borne co-infections with the Lyme disease, which absolutely can contribute to chronic inflammation and chronic disease.